My name is Chip Powell. I'm currently a senior software engineer with British Telecom. Um, my training started um, with electrical engineering. I took a degree at uh, Northeastern University in Boston, which kind of gave me my hardware background. But uh, at that point in my career, I thought getting involved in software was probably a smarter bet. So I did some self-training, but eventually ended up at Harvard uh, getting a master's there in software engineering. Um, all during this time I sort of worked on the side um, so it kind of took a little longer but I'm kind of happy I did it that way because I had a lot of nice practical experience to back up the education and I got my employer to help pay for it so you know that's hard to beat. Well in my shop basically we would start with a set of customer requirements. Perhaps it's a new product, maybe it's um, about extending an existing product, but you have a set of specifications that you need to design to. This would include, you know, user interfaces as well as back-end uh, support, you know, databases and all the service layer code that goes in between to connect it all. So we would have to make an analysis of the best way to architect something like that, see how it could fit in with our existing, you know, code structures and modules and try to come up with something that's both very efficient and if it's going to fail it will you know degrade gracefully in such a way that it doesn't leave the customer data you know in a, in a bad state and helps inform them you know what kind of corrective action might be necessary so it's kind of like a big puzzle um, that you have to kind of you know put together in three dimensions but it's a very satisfying feel because you know once you code something you can fairly immediately see if it works or not uh, so I kind of like that aspect of it. So, uh, you know, it really kind of varies in that regard, but it tends to follow a, a similar pattern. You try to, you know, do a cogent design, get it peer-reviewed so that you're, you know, following the standards and um, procedures of your firm. Uh, you know, you may maybe prototype um, some of the modules to get a feel for whether the user interface seems uh, elegant or not, or perhaps um, you even do sort of a mock version of the product and provide that to the customer so they can get a feel for whether or not, you know, the interface is going to meet their needs. And you kind of iterate on that over and over, continuing to add complexity until you, you know, sort of get to the end of the line. Um, that process is known as agile development. You're, you know, constantly trying to incrementally push the product ahead and do your you know, quality control um, you know, as you go so it's not all left to the end. You know, because often if you pursue that approach, which is known as the waterfall approach, um, it really has not proven to be very successful, uh, especially in the kind of uh, code systems we're seeing today where you've got many different languages that are in interplay. And you might be working with Java. Um, with low-level code that might be controlling, you know, proprietary chips, um, database SQL, you know, there's, there's a lot of moving parts, so trying to keep it all in sync and, you know, well-documented and well-tuned as you go really pays dividends.